Do you see it? Do you see it? Oh, go get it. Okay, that'll buy me like 20 seconds. Hello, welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a really fun sewing video for you. So usually I do one project each month and I walk you guys through the process. And this month of No By April, I'm actually doing something a tad bit different. I am going ahead and diving into my mending pile and doing a kind of self-described, self-made up mending challenge. So I'm going to see how many garments I can get out of my mending pile and back into circulation my wardrobe in 12 hours. I am breaking up this chunk of time. I don't have the type of time to just sit down and mend for 12 hours in a block. So I am doing a few days of like a couple hours in the evenings after work and then Saturday and Sunday I will be doing like bigger chunks. Um, this is future Haley who already knows how that time management went. Um, initially I had planned a 24 hour mending challenge but uh, I do work full time and that was not a very realistic goal. So we are dialing it back to 12 and I still got so much done in this amount of time and I'm super excited to take you along for the ride. Let's hop back to past Haley as I talk about my how I sorted out my mending items and the amount of time it would take to get them done. This is my mending pile. Uh, it's pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff in it. Um, and we're gonna kind of see how much of this like mending pile I can bust through. So I'm gonna start by kind of sorting out what's gonna take the most effort. So like, for example, this one, I just need to replace the buttons. So that should be pretty low effort. Um, this is actually one I need to mend to sell. Um, so this is like probably like a half hour long project max. Um, this one here, you may recall me thrifting this dress. Uh, I basically have to completely pull apart and remake this dress to make it fit me. So this one is going to be an extra large because this would actually probably take the full period. So I will put this at kind of at the end of the line. This one here is another quick fix. This guy here is a little bit um, undone. So this is uh, probably actually like a not even 10 minute fix, but I'm gonna put it with the shirt with no buttons. Uh, this one is a couple of things. It needs me, I need to re-hem this. Uh, there's a hemline here that I just would prefer to go back to because I don't like whoever rehemmed this, how they did it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. This one here is, uh, it just needs, before I can wash it um, to see how much the staining comes out, I just need to stitch um, the waistline. The waistline, it's kind of coming out. So that is realistically like a less than half hour project. So I'll put it in that pile. Uh, this skirt is also from a recent video. And this one here, we are going to hem. So I'm gonna put that in the hemming pile. This one here, um, it also needs a bit of a bath, um, but it has a huge hole in the armpit. Um, I'm actually gonna like put this in my half hour or shorter pile because I think I can do it pretty shortly once I get it going. Um, I've just been putting it off because that hole like is super frayed and scary looking. Um, this one is another one that is going to go in the under a half hour. So basically what's happening here is the pleats are coming out because the thread at the bottom of it that reinforces it is coming is like splitting. Um, so I just need to reinforce the pleats on this and then it is good. Um, this one here, um, I believe I need to reevaluate the side closure. I did a traditional 40s no zip side clo closure and I believe I just needed to add a couple extras here. So that should be a really quick mending project. Um, this one here, one of my friends gave to me, it was her grandma's. Uh, I think it's adorable. This one I just need to really, I'm just gonna take a simple box pleat in the back. Um, that's maybe not like the most attractive way to fix this garment, but it's the way for me, I want to be able to preserve this to be let out again for a larger size. Um, so I'm not making this like permanently smaller. And to me, the best way to do that is just a box pleat. And I also like how like a box pleat kind of looks like on my butt. Like I think it's just, it's flattering. Um, so that should be a quick half hour project. This one here, it just, uh, the stretch in the shoulders has come out. It used to be um, smocked at the shoulders and now it's not. So I just need to re-smock the shoulders. Um, I'm gonna do it super rigged. I'm just gonna straight up put a few gathering stitches in and pull those tight and knot it because I don't need the stretch to get into this because there's a zipper down the back. Uh, so I'm gonna do this in a super rigged fashion and it should take less than a half hour. This is another hem. I got this in a Redbird box and I think it's really pretty. I just will only wear it if it's a mini um, and it's a maxi right now. So I'm gonna just take this into a mini. So this goes into my hemming pile. Um, it doesn't need any other work besides that. 
Same with this one. I got this in a Redbird box, um, and I just basically need to hem it. Oh, these are pants. These are the velvet pants I bought a while ago. I just need to hem them a little bit, so hemming pile it goes. Um, this one is also one that I need to hem. Um, I also, on all everything that I'm going to hem, I need to try on the dresses and reassess if they're dresses I want to keep or if they're dresses that I would rather just sell and not mend because I don't know if this would be a dress that I would keep even if I mended it. So uh, I'm going to kind of reevaluate my hemming pile. This one here literally just needs the buttons replaced. Um, the wooden buttons have gotten to the point where they snag the buttonholes of the sweater because they have been washed incorrectly so many times. So that is a quick, easy mend. This is literally the quickest mend. I am just so lazy. I literally just need to glue this part. Like I just need to super glue this onto the one button that it fell off of when I washed this. When I got this, it was pretty stained and I just put it in some retro curling clean and called it a day. And this is the season to wear this sweater. So um, this is actually probably gonna be like my number one project because I literally just have to put on super glue on it and set it to the side and wait for it to dry and then it's like good to go. Uh, this one here is another one that needs a hem. It's a, and I really would like to get this going because we're getting to the season where I'll use it. It's a cotton dressing gown and I can just wear it in the mornings before I feel like getting dressed. Um, and it just is like, I think like three inches too long on me. So um, I will show you the process of, because now I now live alone, I have to actually mark the hems myself. Like I used to have my roommate do that. So I'll show you that process when I get to the hemming part. And then last up is this dress. I love this dress. Um, I literally, like, again, this is the, like me being so lazy. Uh, it just needs, I just need to stitch across the bottom of the zipper a few times so the zipper can't go off the track. Literally all I have to do, and I've been putting it off. Um, and so as a result, I have not worn this dress, and it's gotten a little crunched, so it's going to need a good steam before it goes back in the closet. Um, so this is going into my, like, 10-minute mending pile. So I'm going to readjust, real quick, readjust to the way the camera's looking to show you kind of my piles and where we've landed. Um, but this is my everything under here should take less than a half hour pile. We will see how that works out and if that is true. And then this is my hemming pile. This is then my bigger projects that should still be doable in this amount of time. And then these, I, you can't quite see it. Oh, you're now gonna say hello, huh? Um, yes, uh, please don't play on the scissors. Thank you. And then that pile over there is stuff that I don't think I'm gonna get to because they're full on transformations. Um, but so what I'm gonna do is I am going to take all of these and put them back in the bin in order of the projects I want to do first on top and last to the bottom. Um, and then um, I will check in with you when I start mending, um, which is actually probably going to be later this afternoon or tomorrow. So this first one, I literally just have to super glue these things together. Um, and the paint has, like, this is so easy. So I literally just have to go whoop. Um, and then stick it back on there where the paint matches up. Um, now I'm just gonna not touch it for a while. So that was a repair that took me approximately one minute and like 20 seconds. Alrighty guys, tonight I have a few repairs lined up. So all of these are just quick little fixes. This one's a little bit less quick and it'll take more pinning. But I figured I would kind of talk about one of the important things with mending is actually thread matching. And it can actually be quite challenging because I don't know about you, but like for me, I don't keep a ton of thread on hand unless I have projects that I have used or will be using it for. So kind of finding that color match can be a little bit hard. The cameras don't always show color the best, but I think this for this one is the closest match. Um, I don't really have any, oh no, I do have some hot pink thread. Um, not quite the right tone, but for what I'm doing, it doesn't need to be exactly the right tone. This one is going to take more work because of pinning, but both of these should be really simple and straightforward, so I'll probably do both of these off camera, and I probably will do this one off camera, but we'll see. Alrighty, and over here in this pile, um, I'm by a window so you guys get enough light. I am doing all of my buttons. So first is just pairing buttons. So I'm first going to try to find buttons to replace this guy with, um, as well as buttons to replace the ones that were here on this one. I believe this one needs five buttons, and then this one over here, this black one, needs five. 
So I actually have my buttons sorted into number of buttons in each set because most often you're looking for a number of buttons, but that's kind of your parameters. Um, this is my container that contains groups of four to six, so it's in theory perfectly in the realm of what I might be looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and use these square black buttons for the black shirt. Uh, these should be the right size. As you can see, Spooky has decided to join. Um, as you can see, maybe um, she's blocking my light. You're blocking my light, little one. She's now rubbing her head against the camera. Um, but these fit about the right size, and the biggest one for this shirt was just choosing something that blends a little bit in. One of the biggest parts of mending is finding all the parts, which is kind of what I'm showing you here. The actual mends themselves probably won't take that long, but finding the buttons takes time, finding the matching thread takes time, and all of that, it just takes time. Uh, I've tried to find buttons for this sweater before and really struggled. Um, because it's a sweater full of buttons, I keep wanting the buttons to look like the buttons on the sweater, but I think I'm just gonna need to let that go in order to have it be a tad more functional. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, but they don't have to match. So I have, this here is my single buttons container. Um, so I just need to basically find buttons in here that I think will fit. The biggest thing is fitting the holes. I think I'll put these six buttons on this garment. Um, so I have all my buttons. Uh, I'm gonna do this part off camera, um, but I will show you the results when they are all done. All right, um, we are back the next day and two hours later. Um, so just kind of showing you real quick the different repairs I did. Um, so here you can see the thread doesn't really match because it's red. Um, let me take my camera out a little bit, that should help. Um, but it is red, so it doesn't really match, but it does the job. It is now sturdily on and won't be falling off when I wear this skirt. Um, this one here, you can see it has all its buttons, and then I also sort of ironed it. I did not do a great job ironing it, but I did a good enough job ironing it for now. And this one, also brand new buttons. Look at these. They look so much better than the last round, um, so I'm pretty excited. This one's a little bit loose, but that's fine. Um, it also needs to be the easiest to get on and off. This bottom one here is a little bit too big, so as soon as I find a button that replaces this one, I will but it is now a completely wearable sweater. Um, this one was another button replacement. I don't know if you remember those terrible shiny buttons, but they are now these beautiful subtle black buttons. Um, so I'm pretty, like I said, very excited. I don't know, mending things can be super rewarding for me. Um, and then this one here. So if you look here, I don't know if you can see this thread here, but this is actually now my zipper stop. Before, the zipper would just go off the track here. When I pull this down, it now stops here where this thread is that I looped a bunch of times around the zipper instead of popping all the way off. Uh, this repair took longer because I got the zipper off the track um, and it took me almost 15 minutes to get it back on the track after I had screwed it up, but it is now done and I'm very excited. This last one here, I'm going to have to figure out, um, I don't know if you guys can tell but the silk on this is pretty much shredded. Um, it is not working anymore the way it should. Um, it's pretty frustrating. And so to save this garment, I'm going to need to take off the sleeves, which is a bummer because I do love this on the sleeves. But um, I think this is the one I repaired. Um, it's just, it's such a mess. Um, I'm hoping you can kind of see really like, like this is basically threads together. Um, and the rest of the garment is not like this. So what my plan is, let me real quick turn it inside out. So my plan here is there's like this little round of almost like a bias tape. My plan is to cut the sleeve to that line and then to fold this bias tape in and slip stitch it down to make it a no sleeve shirt. We are going to see how that works. It might honestly like not work. Um, I don't know how else to salvage this garment because the sleeves are just so trashed. Yeah, figure out how to cut this out. So this is gonna be a lot more work, but I just wanna tackle it and get it over with. So I'm gonna get started there. Alrighty, folks, um, we're giving up on this one. Um, I love the beadwork, um, but it is just, it's trashed. Um, let me find it. There's like a big patch on the back where there's this big hole um, along the zipper. The fabric has completely come off. Um, this is just, this is too trash to fix. 
Um, and the fabric itself is too delicate, so I don't know. I'm gonna add it to like my scrap bin and maybe someday find a use for all this beautiful beadwork. Um, but the more I try to fix it, the more problems I see. As you can see, I got the sleeves off and it was looking better without the sleeves. But yeah, I was just finding and then on this side, there's a giant section where it's coming off. Um, it's just this one's a lost cause and I'm like 30 minutes into trying to fix it for the second time, I guess. Um, and it doesn't fit me that well. So yeah, this one is just gonna unfortunately not be fixed um, because I just, I can't, um, I don't have the desire to go forward. So now I'm gonna go grab another mending pile and start there. All right, bear with me on the lighting on this one. We have some hot spotting happening because of the sun, um, but we're gonna dig into these. These all need to be machine sewn. Um, so here is the smocking, um, I believe that's what it's called, that is too stretched out. Um, I'm just gonna go and baste on rows like one, probably the middle one and the end one, and I'm just gonna tie those up and kind of put them in a corner. I don't think this needs to be elastic. Um, I could be horribly wrong when I try it on, and we'll figure that out when we get there. Um, same thing um, with the other side. Uh, so this one I just need black thread for. Um, and then another black flat thread based repair is this one. There's not as many that need doing as I think I initially thought. Uh, so this one, let's see if I can get... I don't know if you can tell, but the thread's broken that's across the pleat. Um, and the pleat itself is actually coming undone a bit. It should go actually all the way down to this pin. And then there's only a second one to fix where you can see the stitching is coming out. So I'm going to do those. Um, the last one, or second to last, is this is one that I'm going to do a box pleat. I think, an in, I think is, is it an inverted where it'll show like this and I'll press it flat. I'll show you kind of the end result. That'll be much clearer. Um, and then last up is this one. This is the waist seam. Um, there's just a lot of things falling apart on this waist seam, so I'm actually going to go around the whole thing to reinforce it. So that is where we'll get started. I will check back in after I do all the things. All right, guys, um, ignore the mess, ignore the disaster. It's just where we are in the week. Um, this is that first skirt refitted. So before it was about four inches too loose. Uh, you can kind of see it right here. Um, but this is the box pleat I used to just close that up. The last thing I need to do is stitch down like the inside of the box pleat, but I think this looks really good. I think it is fitting much better. Um, yeah, so let me now hop into the next. All right, just to show you guys kind of, so I was debating taking this one in. It is a little bit baggier on the bust, but honestly it fits me about perfectly where I would want it to on the waist just because with these crochet button system, you don't actually want it to be tight. We'll awkwardly try to show you in the mirror. Um, this is resecured, so now the next step in mending this one is actually a bath. All right, and then my last kind of, I think, try on for today. Um, so I just want to show you the difference in the shoulder here. So this is the one that I haven't kind of re-gathered. Um, and this is, and then this one over here is the one I have. So if you can see my shoulder, it's still not exactly the way I want it to be. It's pretty puckered because I don't have the gathers like where exactly I want them, but if you can see this, this one is sitting like nicely on top of my shoulder and the other one is kind of like falling down. So my goal is just to get both to look kind of more like this one. I actually think ideally I would even get this one a little bit tighter, but I'm not going to be able to do that while it's on me. Um, and while kind of where I'm looking at everything I want to show you all up, kind of where I'm at, um, this one's done. It's looking great. Uh, this one was pretty quick fix. I would have to find the ones I did, but it was really straightforward. Um, this one, I wanted to show you what I meant by the inside. Um, this is what I'm pinning down and what I'm then going to sew down so that way it just isn't like bulky and weird in the back. Um, the pink one is done. Um, I wanted to show you my little sun baby. She's been getting very into the sunshine, which I've been enjoying. Um, she was not always a sunshine laying cat, and this is kind of new, and I love it. Um, a little windowsill cat. Um, she's watching me sew, you know, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, um, go ahead and sew this down, and get the other arm of this one gathered. 
Um, and then we're gonna move on to, I guess, our next set of projects. Okay, um, so this is the first dress to hem. Um, I love this dress. It was most likely a bridesmaid's dress. I think this can be worn in everyday life if you make it a mini. Um, so I'm gonna actually hem it to right above my knee. So I'm gonna do this, hold up. Um, I'm gonna use these pins so maybe you can vaguely see what I'm doing. Um, for this one, I don't need the mirror as much. Uh, but I'm gonna kind of, so what happens is when you bend it over, it changes the length of the fabric. So I'm gonna stick a couple pins in at a couple different heights and see which pin I like best. Also, Spooky decided to play with her noisiest toy right now. Um, I think I'm actually gonna do the shortest length here. Um, I do leave in about an inch-ish, uh, inch plus of seam allowance. Uh, usually, actually, probably even two, so that way if somebody else gets the dress after me, they can lengthen it or shorten it, but I think this would look cute as a mini-mini, and so I'm going to go ahead and plan to take it up to this pin. I'm just going to kind of pin a couple in a row and again, and then I'm going to look back in the mirror and make sure I'm still happy with my length choice, uh, and this one was a very even hem, so technically you should take your hem from here down. Um, instead of the bottom, because the bottom, it could be uneven. I decided to move Spooky more in frame. She's being very funny right now. Um, but a lot of hems are pretty uneven down at the bottom, and so you go from the top down. However, this does not have a clear waistline either, and the hem for this feels pretty even. Um, if you look at it, there is a hole there, but I just, that's a hole from me because I was, I grabbed a scrap of it to get, get a matching thread color. But I think I'm happy with this length. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the average of these three pins and I'm going to measure from that length. Um, um, but now I'm going to hop into the next item to hem. Actually, before I do that, um, this item here I've talked about, uh, this one I'm just going to hem. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just going to hem it where this line was previously. Alrighty. Ugh, sorry, I almost just fell down. Um, so this is my second dress I need to hem. Uh, this one, just like eyeballing it, I can tell. I just need to move the hem up. Oh, Spooky. Spooky's playing with the microphone, so excuse any weird noises you might hear. Um, this one, so, oh, also to a note on shoes, I'm wearing, like, a little heel for, actually, you could probably see it better in front of this. Okay, so you can see that heel size. Uh, it's probably about an inch and a half. You ideally wear the shoes that you wear with the garment, but I really vary in whether I wear heels or not. The tallest heels I wear are three inches, and then the shortest are no heels, so I figure a one and a half inch heel is perfect. Spooky. She's wild right now. Um, this is a dress I got in a Redbird box. It is just a smidge too long for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this one up an inch and a half from the bottom. Um, if you look at the hem, you can actually see... There's already a decent allowance, and since this is a knit, there's no way in heck I'm cutting it. So I'm just going to measure an inch and a half up from where it is right now um, and do that. And that will be an easy fix for this one. Alrighty. Um, so this is another item. This does not need hemming. This just needs... Um, it gaps in the side right here. So it just needs another hook and eye. I just needed to try it on to remember where exactly it needed the extra hook and eye closure because I couldn't remember where it bagged. Um, so the general rule with, I'm just gonna real quick stick a pin here, but um, the general rule with hook and eyes versus snaps, so I have snaps down here, um, and then I have hooks and eyes up here, and snaps are for when there's no tension, and hook and eyes are for when there's tension. Um, and so up here I have hook and eyes, down here I have snaps. Um, so that just needs a quick hook and eye add addition. Okay, we've got another one in line. Uh, so the biggest like dilemma around not, about just repairing this is, um, it's gonna be hard to like match the thread cause I'm gonna kinda have to like weave it back together almost. Um, and that's gonna be a bit tricky with the thread, but I think I'm gonna actually take a gander at that first before I hem it. Because this is going to be a huge hemming project because as you can see, this is a, I think, full circle skirt. 
Um, so this is just going to be a really long hem job. So to reduce back on time, I'm going to try first just repairing, I think. I kind of missed prime pant season in these, um, but they are a good amount too long for me. These I need to kind of test more the length because the length of these is going to really matter. Like with a dress, there's kind of more wiggle room, but with pants, you kind of, you need them to sit where you need them to sit. Um, so I'm just going to probably... There's like already an existing hem here, um, like a hem that's rolled. I'm just going to real quick start by rolling it again and seeing how I feel about that length because this would be the easiest way to perform the repair. Um, they look very funny to me. Um, I'm not used to seeing pants like this on me. Um, they make me feel like I have like giant legs, um, but I think they're so cute. Um, and that looks actually like that's the perfect length um, for what I want. Uh, where they won't be too, like, if I'm wearing probably a heel that puts me about here, they won't feel too whatever, and then this would be the lowest heel I would wear, and this would still keep them off the ground. So, I think this is the length I'm going to go with. This was a super easy one. So I just have one more item to try on um, to show you guys how I'm going to hem it. This one here, I've decided the hem, so moving the hem on this is a lot of work because it has this extra frill to it. And I am just not in love with the fit of this dress. So I've just decided I'm going to sell this one um, as is. Uh, I mean, much many people are taller than I am, so somebody will use it. But I think it's just going to take so much time to move the hem, and I'm not even sure I love the garment. So it'll just get passed along to somebody else who will hopefully love it more than I do. Um, <laughs> as you can see, uh, this is hitting the floor by like seven or eight inches. It's pretty absurd. So what I'm gonna do is I think I need it about here, but this again, I'm gonna use the same trick of setting a few of them at different heights and seeing in the mirror which height I like best. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the yellow there. Um, I'm kind of going back on what I was saying about probably trying to preserve this because when I was looking at this, it already has a good amount of seam, seam allowance at the bottom spooky. She wants, she likes my robe. She thinks it means she's going to get fed because I wear a bathrobe when I feed her in the morning and usually in the evening. Um, but she's not getting fed right now. Too bad. But uh, I'm going to kind of go back on leaving all that seam allowance um, just because it would be a lot of seam allowance. But I'm pretty happy with that. So now my next step is measuring everything on all of these. Um, I'll probably take you through the process on that really light blue dress and show you everything I'm doing to that one and just know that that is the process I'm repeating off of all of these. Alrighty, we, we'll see how long my battery lasts. Um, but here is the dress. Um, I have just a pair of scissors right now um, and this thing. Um, I like to use one of these instead of a ruler ruler because I feel like you can get a better idea of if you're actually square with the bottom on one of these. Um, so I'm going to first start by just taking the measurement of where these pins are. We're going to say they are at 22 inches above. So that is my end hem length. So I need to add enough to like turn up the edge like this. So I'm going to add two inches to that. Um, so we're targeting cutting this at 20 inches. Actually, she works as a good pattern weight. <laughs> Not the goal, I'm sure, Spooky, but I am fine with it. She's very hyped right now, so we'll see if I have to give up on this earlier than uh, expected. Stop it. Hey, you. Let's find you a mouse. See it? See it? See it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't play fetch, by the way. So, we're gonna... Keep on trucking along. Actually, I should be measuring properly. So we're going to scoot you over here. Trying to hit 20. Okay. <laughs> I'm so mean. I know. I know. The meanest cat mom in the whole world, huh, Spooky? Because I won't let you do whatever you want. I mean, she does run the place. So yeah, I'm just continuing to put pins in at 20 inches. 
I'm gonna do this all the way around. Um, the other thing is they actually have a binding tape in here for their hem. So after I am done getting this all ready I, and cut, I am then going to pick out to use the hem binding because it matches the dress perfectly and I don't have anything in my stash that's like comparable to that. Okay, that's why. It's like, that looks wrong. Um, you have to really watch yourself when you measure um, just because like it's easy to get off by a half inch and then you're, hey, uh-uh, we are not snagging fabric. Okay, now you have to scoop. You're gonna make me mean spooky. Hey, hey. There you go. There's your real point. I also am like, she's at that point where you really like need to trim their claws and you're putting it off because their claws really hurt. Um, so that's fun. Hey, uh-uh, that's the dress that I'm keeping. Hey, stop it. Where did your mouse go? Here it is. Ready? Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Go get it. Okay, that'll buy me like 20 seconds. I'm gonna be poking in by your butt. Scoot your butt. Thank you. Ow! We're close. We're close to the end. You're so dramatic. You act like I just like pushed you off a four story building. I lightly pushed. Um, okay. Well, the good news is they lined up all the way around. Um, you know your hem is off when you get to the end and they are nowhere near each other. Hey, off. Shoo. No, get your little paws out of lace. Yeah, her trim, she needs a trim so bad on her claws. Okay, so I am going to, um, what are you hunting? I don't like this. Ugh, okay, hey, got another mouse. Here, yeah, take that. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop away. This is such a weird fabric. I don't know what it is. I mean, I know it's polyester, but I don't know what I would like describe it as. Um, also, like, note that as I'm doing this, I'm not the best mender. I wouldn't necessarily take full lessons from me on these. I'm just showing you how somebody who's completely self-taught has learned how to do things. Um, if you're offended by imperfect mending, um, this is not the channel for you. This is especially not the video for you. Um, or like, even like, I'm a terrible, like, I hate cutting things. Uh, if I can, I like to use a rotary cutter if it's like straight. Uh, cause I'm, hey, uh-uh, you're gonna get yourself hurt. Hey, 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 hey. But I do love doing it, and at the end of the day, this garment was kind of, I mean, I know some people would wear it, but pretty unwearable, and this is gonna make it hopefully last longer. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, also machine repair update. The shop just contacted me and they don't know if they're going to be able to fix my vintage one. So if they can't, I guess I have to buy a new one, which is a bummer. Cause I, I do want to have two machines, which sounds dramatic, but I think having a backup machine when you sew as much as I do is kind of important, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to be super bummed if they can't fix it. Hey, uh-uh. Okay, that's not toys. I bought these pins. Well, I didn't buy these pins, actually. Eureka Monogram sent them to me. But I wanted pins that have, like, big ends. So that way I don't leave them in the carpet for Spooky to play with, find, and maybe accidentally gobble. Um, and the thing is, is she ignores my other pins. Are you enjoying that? Okay, that I don't care about. You do you on whatever you're doing right now. Just please be careful. Oh God. Yeah, I am a terrible fabric cutter. But we're almost done. We're almost all the way around. And again, we're meeting at the same place. Uh, this is not normally how I cut fabric. Normally I wait till spooky is in nap mode because it's a pretty awful experience. Huh. Is this pretty terrible? Hello! 
<laughs> she didn't like that. Um, normally I wait till she's in nap mode, but um, she has been like, I don't know. I don't know who else has cats, but she goes on these streaks where she's just a terror for like a few days and then she'll maybe chill out again. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll get close real quick um, to show you what I'm cutting out. But my next step is going to be to take all of the stitching. Let's, let's put it right by my face. Uh, hopefully you can see that is to take all the stitching out that keeps this hem tape in place. And then I'm gonna sew the hem tape to the uh, bottom that I just cut. And then I will get it folded and ready to be hand sewn. Alrighty, so we are an hour and a half into this. That includes the cutting. And then I had to unpick this guy. Um, re-put it on here. So the way I did that, um, just so you can see, is I stitched it on. So this fray is pretty bad and they had this up to the edge and I just don't want it to be visible. So I went ahead and tucked it under and sewed it that way so it'll look cleaner in theory. We'll see. Um, it might also look bulkier. <laughs> um, but so my last step on this guy is to hand hem. Um, this is the only one I'm going to show you all the way through the process because this is more, most complex. The rest should take significantly quicker because they are um, longer. Um, but be, because they weren't, aren't going to take the steps of cutting plus unpicking the binding tape plus sewing the binding tape back on plus then um, folding it and then hand sewing it. So yeah, that is that and I will check back in probably when I get a good bulk of all the different hemming stuff that I showed you done. Alrighty, so we have the shortened dress. I think this looks much better. Um, yeah, I don't know. So much better in my opinion. Um, but this is what's left of my mending pile. Uh, when we started, this was a completely full bin and now we have eh, probably like only a quarter full, so I'm pretty excited about that. This is everything I finished in this video, which is quite a hefty load. It's even pretty hard to lift. Um, I'm pretty pumped about getting all of these things either back in my wardrobe or ready to sell to somebody else. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was all the bending I could get done in 12 hours. As you can see, it was quite a lot. Um, the longest thing was definitely that dress that I shortened, and then everything else was pretty short, but it all adds up over time. If you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe and stick around. Um, I am going to have a really fun sewing project in the next month, and so definitely stay tuned for that. I will see you next time. Bye!